Well, I think there's there's a wide variance there. You you bring up Malik Neighbors and, and Brian Thomas. You know, those guys are first round draft picks, right? So you're talking about signing bonuses that are, you know, upwards of fifteen million dollars. NIL is not going to, you know, uh, keep you in school for that. But you know, I, I think it can influence those guys that are on the fence relative to, you know, are you a fourth or a fifth round draft pick or even free agents. NIL can certainly, um, I think, make a difference there. So, yes, in answering your question, I think NIL has, has helped lessen the burden of deciding, hey, I need to go to the NFL. I need to make money um, because uh, NIL is helping me um, and, and making it easier for me to, to be a student athlete. So, Coach, there are obviously the guys that are going to be the first-round talents, but what do you have to say about guys like Omar Spates and Makai Wingo who helped their draft stock today and kind of what preparations and how they've improved? Yeah, that's what pro days are for, right? I mean, these are the opportunities to not only use the film that you have, but, you know, to back it up with the athleticism. They both had great days. You know, Makai was great, obviously, in, in the shuttle and, you know, his short – you know, quickness, short field quickness is, is obviously one of the things that you see on film. And now, you know, back that up with the skill. Um, Omar ran extremely well. Um, I thought all the guys tested I extremely well today. I think Charles had a hamstring issue, which limited him in some of the position work. But across the board, I thought the guys did a great job. They were in great shape. They've trained real hard. This is important to them. You know, the you know, we, we want our guys to graduate. We want them to do well in school. And then now this is the other part of it. And, and that they were very well prepared. Coach, Jaden kind of proved himself on the field last season. Do you think that there's anything that can do that can boost him even more than what he's already at? I mean, he's had all the accolades and everything else. Can he do anything more? I, I think we're at that point now where, you know, I think uh, this was the, the last um, kind of check the box for head coaches, GMs, uh, those decision makers in terms of who are going to make those final says on the say on the quarterback. I think probably today was that last day for him. Um, you know, he'll continue to work out. He'll continue probably to um, have, you know, interviews uh, along the way. But. Uh, I, I think that, um, you know, uh, the haze in the barn, so to speak, as it relates to the evaluation process of, of Jaden Daniels, I think he left no stone unturned today with the performance that he had today throwing the football. Coach, right down here, you mentioned a lot of times during the season what Makai brought to this locker room. Can you expound upon a little bit more and just what – you know, NFL GMs can expect what they're going to get, not only on the field, but inside that locker room? Yeah, so look, I mean, the, the, the National Football League is looking for contributors on the field and guys that they can trust in the locker room that are going to represent their franchise in the right way. Obviously, you know what he did. He, he wore number 18, which is emblematic of a leader both in the locker room and, you know, in our community. And, and certainly uh, – they're going to get that kind of guy. So, you know, when you're drafting and you know that um, you've got a guy that can help you on the field and is going to represent your organization in the community um, and, and be respected in the locker room, uh, that, that's an easier guy to advocate for when you're talking about, you know, do we take him in the, you know, this round or that round? And so that definitely helps your draft status. Uh, Malik's numbers today really spoke to his explosiveness. In what ways does that separate him as a receiver? Well, you know, look, I mean, we can talk about numbers and all the things that are important, but, you know, physicality and the ability to separate from great players on both sides of the ball, there, there has to be something that, that you look for. And when you watch film, you see him separate from great players in the SEC. Today, you saw a 42-inch vertical, and, and then you, you see 4-3, and you go, okay, I get it. This, this ability um, to separate on the field is now backed up by the physical prowess that we see with a 42-inch vertical and a 4-3. So 
I, I think what it does is it validates what you see on film is that it's backed up with great physical traits. And I think what it does more than anything else is it, it, it shows that, that he can separate with the ball in his hands. He can be explosive after the catch. Um, and and now, now, again, I think it comes down to, you know, who's the kind of guy that you want to get the ball in, in, in their hands. And, you know, I've seen him. Um, I'm certainly going to advocate on his behalf. I, I don't think there's a better receiver in the country. Uh, hey, Coach, right over here. Um, just, you know, today was probably the biggest day in terms of numbers you guys have had at a pro day in your three years here. Just yep. what do you think a day like today does for the program, guys on the current roster, just watching that, and then the future of the program as well? Yeah, I think there's a few levels. First of all, the, the one thing that you mentioned is, you know, we had, you know, a lot of national television here, the NFL Network, ESPN, obviously getting that kind of notoriety uh, for LSU and for the football program. Uh, certainly is um, you know very good for you know your uh, your program and uh, how you move forward relative to the recruiting uh, and certainly for our young guys they get a chance to see what it's like um, it's a job interview in many ways and and how you need to prepare you know for that job interview and I think our guys did a great job preparing for that job interview today so they get a chance to see that and then I think finally you know the the, the entire country got a chance to see you know elite players um, and and what that looks like and LSU has has done a great job over the years of, of um, developing elite players so I think uh, on three levels we got a chance to see that today a coach, so uh, Jay and Daniels, obviously, we know what kind of player he is, and he's putting himself in a position where he's at now. But just see what he was able to do today and just represent Greg, wear the number three, and, and just pay tribute to him, which just kind of speaks volumes, I guess, as far as what kind of leader he is, what kind of teammate he is, right? Yeah, again, I think it goes to the kind of character that he is. He's, he's thinking other-centered. He's thinking outside of just Jaden Daniels. He's thinking about one of his teammates um, that he holds in, in, in high regard. Um, and, and that's the way he's been since he's gotten here. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, sharing uh, the success that he's had, um, you know, with, you know, NIL. Um, you know, he took care of the team with, with headphones. I mean, it's just these little things that he does that maybe doesn't get appreciated, but he's always thinking about his teammates first. That, that, that throwing that, that we saw today, he brought in, you know, teammates uh, so they could get um, a chance to be seen today in front of a, a number of scouts. So, um, and maybe that's maybe not the reason uh, you do that, but um, it, it was for him. You know, he wanted to showcase... Uh, some other guys today, and uh, he certainly did that. But that's Jaden Daniels. What questions have NFL teams had for you about Jaden, and what has your message been to them? You know, it's interesting. Um, <laughs> the, the, there's very few questions about um, he can't do this or he can't do that. Um, I think it's more, will he slide? <laughs> will, will he get down? Um, I, I think that that's, and my, what I said to them is, look, you have a guy who's incredibly uh, tough and competitive. Um, no one more uh, so than the guy that I saw get hit in the Alabama game and come back the next week out of the concussion protocol and set an NCAA record the next week. That, to me, speaks to his toughness, and he's a smart guy. He's, he's figured this thing out. So um, that's been really the biggest question. It hasn't been anything about, you know, can he pick up the safety reads? Can he, you know, pick up blitz protections? Can he do those things? They see that on film. It's, um, Coach, will he protect himself? Uh, and I'm sure he will.